Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Friday the 6th of July and this quick preview of the week beginning the 9th of July. Um, before we get on to that, I think it's important that we look back at the events of the last few days and I think if anyone was in any doubt whether or not President Trump was serious when he promised um, $50 billion worth of tariffs on Chinese goods, they have their answer. They kicked in at midnight tonight and there's an initial $34 billion worth of tariffs on goods ranging from electric vehicles to industrial lays and other components and machinery used by US manufacturers. Now, as I'm recording this video, China hasn't as yet retaliated in kind. That being said, they are likely to do so on US farm exports like soybeans, um, as well as obviously crude oil and a whole host of other US goods to a similar amount around about 34 billion dollars now president trump did ratchet up the rhetoric in a speech earlier today in montana and um, he suggested that if china did retaliate with respect to the tariffs that have been implemented today that the u.s has in abeyance the prospect of another 200 billion dollars worth of tariffs on Chinese imports and as well as um, another 300 billion on top of that totaling 500 billion dollars of tariffs on Chinese goods. I'm not really sure whether or not actually um, US does that amount of business with China but hey ho uh, we'll have to see how that plays out but ultimately equity markets appear to be shrugging off the fact that these shots the opening shots have now been fired and I think really now the big question is what happens next and at the moment I think there is an expectation that maybe we'll get a tit-for-tat response from China and the, the 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 dialogue could well continue for quite some time yet I think what's also helped equity markets uh, this week is some reports out of Germany that President Trump had um, made an offer to German car executives or as the German ambassador or the US ambassador to Germany had made an offer to German car executives that the US would suspend threats of charges on autos if the bloc also removed equivalent charges on US cars. Now while that seems a very nice solution to a very prickly problem things are never that simple and ultimately I think if tariffs are dropped between German automakers and US car makers they would have to be dropped not only for um, the rest of the European Union but also Japanese car makers South Korean car makers under the terms of WTO rules so um, there are a significant number of hurdles to overcome before that even becomes a possibility and f furthermore it's not likely that um, smaller EU countries would appreciate a sectoral carve out for the for the auto industry which is more likely to benefit Germany and France than the rest of them so while the offer has been made I think it's unlikely that any progress will be made on that particularly quickly that being said we've seen a decent rebound in equity markets this week and we are approaching some key resistance levels and let's let's start by looking at the German DAX we've seen a decent rebound um, just off the 12,200 le level and we're heading back to resistance and the previous lows through here of around about 12,550. Now the oscillator is starting to turn slightly more positive we can see that here um, and I think if we break above this key resistance level at 12,550 then we could see further gains towards the upside and actually when you look at an awful lot of the economic data that we've seen this week by and large it has been fairly positive looking at the services PMIs they've actually come in slightly better than expected um, and I think that has also helped boost the euro we've had some decent German factory goods orders we've also seen a decent German industrial production number for May so I think the concerns about a slowdown at the beginning of this year I think they're starting to come off the boil a little bit and I think there is rising confidence that perhaps we could see a nice little uptick into the summer and into Q3. I think there's also an expectation that uh, the ECB um, or certainly the ECB is promoting an expectation that they will 
raise rates, albeit very modestly, in Q3. And I think there is a perception that maybe that is helping underpin the euro to a certain extent. But I would argue better economic data will do that, not whether or not the ECB guides that it's going to raise rates from minus 0.4% to minus 03 I mean, ultimately, that's still very, very small when you consider the, the fact that the US Federal Reserve is likely to be raising rates at a much faster rate over the same period of time. In that context, the FOMC minutes did suggest that there is rising concern amongst some policy makers that, the, um, that they might have to tighten policy maybe a little bit faster. There is, I think there is limited tolerance for higher inflation and there is a concern that the US economy might be starting to run a little hot as a result of those tax cuts at the beginning of this year. Um, that being said, the dollar is coming under a little bit of pressure and the euro is starting to press towards the upside. Now let's move on to the FTSE 100. Again, there's a nice little resistance line here coming in from the, the highs that we saw in the middle of May, just above current levels at the moment and in line with the 50-day moving average. So keep an eye on that daily chart. Again, here um, we've got the oscillator that is now starting to turn slightly positive, heading towards the 50% level. Um, at the moment, momentum continues to look fairly positive even though I think we're just about marginally positive on the week as a result of the fact that I think the FTSE has been hurt, hit particularly hard because of significant declines in commodity prices and that is a bit of a worry if you're getting a bit of a rebound in the global economy the last thing you want to be seeing is a little bit of weakness in commodity prices and that is what we have been seeing over the course of the past few days with big declines in copper and platinum so um, so the Fed minutes this week articulated some concern about um, the US economy running too hot. We also had comments this week from Mark Carney, Governor of the Bank of England, who suggested that ultimately, if I think the data um, continues to improve the way that it has been, an August the second rate rise is very much on the table. Now, I know what you're going to say. We've been here before, and we certainly have, and I certainly won't believe it until I actually see them pull the trigger on a rate rise. That being said, we have seen a nice rebound in the cable over the course of the past few days. Um, I talked about it um, last week when I suggested that this bullish reversal here could signal further sterling gains. The oscillator is turning higher, but I think if we really want to see a move higher in the cable, then I think we also need to see the UK data that we've got out in the next week or so come in fairly positive. And we've got um, industrial production, manufacturing, trade, and we've also got the first monthly GDP number, um, which should give us a good indication as to how the UK economy is doing on a month-to-month -month basis. And this will be the first time this number has been released by the Office for National Statistics and should give us a decent indication as to how the, Euro the UK economy is doing. We've also got um, Donald Trump visiting the UK next week, sh which should be a fairly interesting state of affairs. Certainly, I think it will uh, prompt an awful lot of wailing and gnashing of teeth from some parts of um, the... the uh, the uh, UK population um, when he uh, when he visits London, um, but ultimately I think what we'll be looking for there I think is um, any sort of indications that the US is going to be particularly sympathetic towards a trade deal when the when the UK finally uh, leaves the EU, and that is I think that is sort of serving to cap the upside in the pound against the dollar because there's still an awful lot of uncertainty as to what the UK's actual Brexit position is when it comes to um, formulating a white paper to give to the EU as to what the UK's position is with respect to trade deal um, and the Irish border. Um, we also have China trade data next week and I'll be paying particular attention to the export data which for the last couple of months has posted numbers in excess of 12%. Will that continue to hold up? Do, um, in the, sh in the shadow of uh, continued concerns about trade wars. We've got Chinese CPI and we've also got a Bank of Canada rate decision. Will the Bank of Canada raise interest rates despite concerns about NAFTA? Um, 
negotiations which are likely to stretch in to the end of this year. I think with the Fed hiking uh, last month, I think the possibility is we could see the Bank of Canada um, hike rates by 25 basis points because simply speaking, the, the Canadian economy does appear to be doing fairly well. Okay, so um, that's pretty much it for today and this week. Thanks very much for listening. It's Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.